Hello, I'm Becca Hoffman, Managing Director of Intersect Art and Design. And I'm pleased to welcome you to the first of our talks program for Intersect 21, a curated virtual exhibition featuring art, design, and photography from 21 galleries in Southern California, the Middle East, and North Africa. We will be live at intersect2021.com from today through February 22nd, and we'll continue on Artsy through March 15th. Today's focus on the platform is the intersections of art, place, and culture. Thus, it is my pleasure to introduce Mohammed Ben Haj, founder and curator of Al Tiba, who will be moderating a talk entitled The Cultural Oxymoron Exploring Notions of Spirituality, Society, and the Breaking Down of Cultural Boundaries, and much more. We hope you enjoyed today's discussion. Thank you so much for joining us, and I'll turn it over to Mohammed now. You're on mute. Okay, so hello uh, everyone. I'm Mohammed Ben Haj. Again, I'm founder and curator of Al Tibab Contemporary Art, one of the galleries exhibiting in the Intersect 21 Art and Design Fair um, and of this year. So I've brought to you uh, a special selection of art professionals, uh, performers, artists, designers to bring a different mix of, um, of creativity, of of business vision and a creative vision. So here where we have, we have with us Laura Gallon and Sara Tortado from Arte Laguna Price from Venice, Italy. And then we have uh, Massimiliano Moro, artist and light designer from Switzerland and the Amira Seket, hip hop dancer and performer from Chicago. So I go ahead with, uh, with uh, the meaning of Altiba. Altiba is uh, the meaning of Atibah is uh, the oxymoron in Arabic. So the oxymoron, the phrase of oxymoron is a basic simple example that I can all the time give to all the network and I say, when we talk and say the same difference, it makes sense. But then usually when we focus on the word, it's the game between same and difference. So when we regard the same and the difference, it makes something new, which is the same difference. For that, I brought you these four different profiles that kind of make the sense of the same difference. So we are all here different on backgrounds, but we together bring something new and something that uh, what I call the universal language. With Laura Gallon that I met her in 2015, I uh, participated in Arte Laguna Prize, I mean, one of the famous, one of the um, finalists of the, uh, of the, the contest. Laura Gallon, we will uh, talk to, about, about this uh, contest, introduce her vision and the person he is. To you, Laura. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm uh, Laura and I founded the uh, Art Laguna Prize with uh, Beatrice uh, 15 years ago. Uh, Art Laguna Prize was founded with the dream of uh, giving new life to contemporary art to discover new artists and uh, create uh, new events. And uh, this is still the main goal that we have uh, six, since uh, 15 years, increasing day by day uh, and um, trying to um, get uh, a new international connection. Um, what we understand since the beginning is uh, that the, to have new ideas and uh, artist proposal, it was, it was necessary to create a, a network of exchanges where everyone brings his own vision. We started creating the cultural association uh, MOCA, Modern and Contemporary Art which now include over 200 members, uh, among which uh, there are entrepreneurs, professionals, collectors, uh, and art lovers. And uh, we spread uh, our vision internationally, reaching hundreds of institutions, uh, museums, foundation, galleries, uh, residences. Uh, our vision has does not have any limit. And uh, um, we think that art is a, a universal language and we want to connect the old part uh, of the world. 
It's great, great. So uh, it, it was a great experience since 2015. We're gonna talk also with the more details about how this and like exchange, cultural exchange between an art professional and artists at that time that it grow in, uh, into big things and we build partnerships and network. Introduce quickly uh, right now, uh, Massimiliano Moro, which is one of the artists I collaborated with in 2019 for the first time where I invited him to exhibit in the Mama Modern Art Museum of uh, Algeria, where he had to confront his, uh, his work of light and design in, uh, in, in the Arab cultural society, basically. Hello, Massimiliano. Hello, everybody. Yeah. And then we have also Amira Sekhet at the same exhibition 2019 in Algeria, where I invited her to perform live. I would like to highlight quickly before giving her the world that Amira, she is one of the 16 Muslim American women that made America great in 2016. And she is also the, uh, the author of the movement, We're Muslim, Don't Panic. So here we have Amira, hello. We don't hear you. Hello, everyone. Yeah. I'm so happy Hello. to be part of the panel today. I'm great. Thank you. So now I, I just go back to Laura and I want um, to highlight also that Art Laguna Prize is one of the most famous art competitions that held in Arsenal of Venice. It's place of um, uh, Venice Biennale and it features over 100 artists from all over the world. It's also um, wearing the title of the most democratic uh, contest of contemporary art, but it's not only an art contest, it's also a um, great network of international uh, exchange and partnership. How did this start at the beginning? How did you get the idea to build a network and what was the necessity to, to start all this, Laura? or Sarah, I mean, I think Sarah can talk about that. Okay, yes, in fact, the necessity, as uh, Laura said before, was uh, exactly the fact that uh, um, we wanted to uh, discover new talents uh, and give mm -hmm. new opportunities to the artists. Um, at the beginning, Laura and Beatrice um, started really from zero, I can say, because yeah. uh, uh, they hadn't a gallery, they hadn't, uh, uh, they, were, they worked in the marketing uh, uh, sector. Uh, but mm -hmm. speaking with uh, a gallerist, uh, this uh, man told them that uh, he really would like to have new proposals, but it was uh, difficult to discover and the artist uh, was always the same uh, who presented yeah. themselves. And so uh, this um, uh, makes them thinking and uh, uh, the network started. Okay. Uh, so, mm -hmm. And so what like uh, what, which connection do you have particularly, for example, with the Arab world or North Africa to, to make you know, wider network of uh, institutions and collaborations? Yes, we uh, started uh, uh, connections uh, really all over the world because uh, mm -hmm. uh, we are very open to every country. And uh, in the past years, uh, we had some connections uh, uh, with uh, these regions. Uh, in particular, we had, uh, for example, uh, uh, connection with the art department uh, in Bodrum, Turkey, uh, connection with the Shelush Gallery in Tel Aviv, Israel. But also we uh, invited the uh, jurors from this part of the world because uh, uh, we want also the representation of uh, their point of view. So we had, for example, Tamara Chalabi from Luya Foundation in Iraq, Swad Garayeva from uh, uh, Yarat Contemporary Art Center in Azerbaijan. And uh, um, our connections allows uh, uh, artists from this part of the country to be known and to be uh, represented also in Venice, but, was, uh, um, but it was also very interesting to see how artists from uh, Europe, from uh, uh, America, from China, was very interesting to uh, um, be selected and have the possibility to exhibit in this part of the world. 
So um, it, it uh, also was a, a confirmation of the fact that uh, uh, we were uh, pursuing the correct way. But uh, in yeah. fact, uh, uh, there could be also some difficulties uh, uh, with some regions, uh, as for example, for the language or for a different culture. Sure. So. Uh, Mm -hmm. But I think art is a universal language, like even if they don't speak English or they don't speak Italian or Arabic. So art, it's a universal language that can got all together. I think the viewer right now is very uh, curious about uh, how our, what Art Laguna Prize look like. So I think we will screen a video so we will show them what is Art Laguna and the magic that you have in Venice. I'm happy. <laughs> I'm smiling all the time. I feel lucky to be selected. I didn't realize that there was so many. But also I feel that uh, all my hard work has been paid off. Makes me feel good about what I'm doing. Getting this opportunity with this history all around you. is a privilege. I'm so happy. It's, it's a great, it's actually a really big exhibition. Congratulations, La Laura. Congratulations, Sara, for the amazing work you, you do. the praise. I'm smiling all the time. <laughs> I love that. I love it's like, um, yeah, it's an all that history. And, and I agree, you know, it's not just a voice in a video. I agree, I've been there as an artist, as a performer, and also as an art curator. I visited in and out the event and it's, yeah, just like when you're there, you're just like happy and it feels, it feels motivating as well for the artists. Um, Laura, when you thought first time by creating this art network, um, what was the convincing element that you seek and boost the uh, artist careers by creating this uh, international network? Uh, international connections are very important because uh, activate the curiosity to discover and to present something new. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks to Arte Laguna Prize, we offer to international institution new artists selected by a jury of uh, high level professionals. And uh, in addition to the exhibition in Venice, uh, there are many other opportunities for these uh, artists that are selected in many countries of the world. We transmit to the partners the importance of being courage, courage courageous and yeah. curious to discover, to really discover new uh, talent. talent. And uh, also uh, we find that uh, artists uh, um, believe more in themselves. We do not organize only Arte Laguna Prize. What, what is beautiful of the connection is that uh, they can always bring something new, uh, even when, with the uh, artists that uh, are not finalists new opportunities can uh, always start. Sure, that's true. So um, what, type, what type of opportunities do you have? Like the artists, they can benefit from this network of galleries, uh, like exhibitions, or what, what do you have as a result of this network? Do you have, so yeah. Yes, we, uh, what we try to do is to have a very different kind of opportunities for the artists mm -hmm. because uh, it's also true mm -hmm. that the jury looks uh, for uh, artists to be exhibited uh, in, uh, in an exhibition in Venice, but uh, uh, artists can, also dif can have also different connections in their career. So, for example, we have activated the business for art that um, mm -hmm. is a connection with the companies. And uh, um, we think that the creativity is very important to give a new life uh, uh, to also to a company. And, uh, and so we have created this uh, kind of connection. 
Then we have art residencies that are also very important, uh, I think, for the career of the artist. And, uh, uh, and also um, what we appreciated very much is the connection that artists create by themselves during an art residencies. Um, we have galleries, uh, art festivals, uh, um, a prize dedicated to sustainability and art. Uh, and uh, um, we don't want to stop uh, all the uh, new connection that can arrive. Uh, um, we are happy to, to evaluate if they are of a good level for the artists and we are uh, happy to go on and create always new connections. So at the end, you don't create only a network for artists, but also you create a network for galleries and for art residencies and art institutions, because at the end, you bring together so many galleries at the same time and between each other, they can have a cultural exchange and a partnership. So um, now, as you know, I'm uh, originally from Algeria and my gallery and platform started in Algeria and, and operating right now internationally. What do you think about the future of the art in the Arab world and, uh, uh, yeah, and North Africa? We wanted to increase these connections and uh, uh, we are very happy to have this collaboration with Altiba uh, because Thank we you. think that uh, um, uh, to have a, a person who, was, who is uh, still an artist but also a curator can really um, open the door in this, uh, uh, in this region, in these countries uh, and represent uh, uh, Arte Laguna Prize uh, um, with also the, the eyes of an artist that is, uh, is important. Um, in, in fact, we started from this year also to have a group of ambassadors, and Mohamed is part of this group for these regions. Yeah. Uh, and it was a great success because uh, um, uh, ambassadors are really near the artist. Uh, it's not only uh, the voice of an institution, but it's the voice of uh, a person. And we want to transmit it to the artist that. Uh, also, Arte Laguna Prize is made of a person that are person that are working with passion, and uh, and the ambassador helps us uh, uh, to do this. Thank you, thank you, Sara, and thank you, Laura, for uh, for this you. explanation. And it's it's amazing. So keep keep doing the great job. So this international connections, it's what created Altibach in the beginning for me in 2013, I initiated this by creating a network between artists to bring more possibilities to North Africa. So I've been inviting artists from all over the world, even though I've been just an individual working alone, I've been all the time inviting artists to join and to transmit the importance of completing each other by creating a network. So by this, it comes, you know, every year edition of Altibak in Algeria. So I invited the last edition in 2019, Massimiliano Moro. And um, he is a light designer. And uh, actually we present him in the Intersect 21 with two beautiful artworks. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your work. And um, yeah, so let us know a little bit what you do. Well, uh, everything, hello everybody. I think everything started when I wanted to find a material to work with that was free of symbols, free of metaphors. It was pure material. So I'm a sculptor at the beginning. I started the sculpture. I started from there and I went backwards until I found the elements that I was comfortable with and that was light. So if in visual arts, I think you cannot go f more backward than light to work with because essentially light is what make us see the world. And so by that, I found a way to work with uh, emotions, work with architecture, work with sculpture in a way that I could leave behind all the symbols, all the metaphors, all the hidden meanings and focus to do sculptures, light sculptures actually, that are exactly what they are. So. In my line of work, I try to present to the viewer something that they see for the first time and something that they don't have to think about, they just have to see. And that's a moment you can actually recognize when you are in that place, in that moment, because it's when the mind starts to wander a little bit. 
and mm. you find yourself contemplating and just watching something, following the movements without thinking anything else. So, okay. I, I I will uh, I will invite the viewer to see uh, one of your artworks while we keep commenting, and uh, this it gives them like a good um, a good view of uh, of your perception. Exactly. This is one of the work uh, presented in the Intersect 21 until the 22nd of February. So yeah, can you just know, take this artwork as an example of what you said? This is a very good example for me because there are, it's, it is what it is. There are circles, there are lines, and there is movement. There's nothing else. Everybody can see something. You can see depthness, you can see depth, you can see volume but you, you don't have to think to understand it. And this is for me very, very important because I don't know, when you see a, a, a patch of color, when you see that white and that yellow that cross together, you see the relation they establish between the two and the architecture. You're not thinking why is it moving or why the line is going there. It's something that it's very, the, the first step to enter these cultures is very easy. It's very straightforward. Then mm -hmm. after that, you, you, when you are caught in the movement, you start thinking and realizing there's more. So after that, you follow the line, you see the break of the lines, you see reflections. But in the end, when you said art is a universal language, I think light is universal too, because we all live in the, under the same sun. Uh, we all know what light is. So culturally, there's, when I go to different places, and I was very scared at the beginning to come to Algeria because I, I didn't like, ever exhibit in the Arab world. And yes. when I got there, it was so nice to see that it's the same for everybody. It's the same energy we have when we are a child. You face something and you look at it, you want to place your hand in front of it. It's, the confrontation is the same. It's true that culturally we have some difference when we talk about shadows, because every culture has a different approach to shadows. Sure. But in my way of working, I try to remove all the metaphors and symbols again from the shadow to put it at the same level of light. So by making this, by making the shadow color, for example, or movement or in movement, I can really forget about what that shadow is. You see, you're seeing a new element, you're seeing a new equilibrium. So this universality gets to the, to the shadow as well. And this is for me, it's very exciting to see in different places and different cultures because every time you go to a new place and when i say new place you know it's not a new country it could be at the same place you've been in another house you expect the, re the reactions to be different and instead with my work when i go and exhibit the reactions are basically the same and this is i don't know this is a, a sign for me that i'm on a good path i'm on a path i'm comfortable to work with because i can focus more on working and trying to find new equilibriums than than finding meanings. And this is for me very important because I'm a very practical artist. I work a lot of time in the studio. I jokingly say to my friends that I don't know near to read or to write in the art world because I'm, yeah. I do things. And I, I, I find this approach uh, very straightforward. And for me also, it's very, I'm very comfortable to work in this way. Hmm. That is a part also of your work, uh, a part of, um... Uh, using circle so frequently and we all all know that circle is one of the most spiritual uh, geometrical uh, form uh, so do you consider also uh, the viewer in front of your work in a process of uh, of a meditation well i don't when i do the works i don't think about it but if i think i think if i think how it's perceived and how i do it it's definitely a meditation because for me, it's, it's putting a light on, putting something in front of it, observing, observing the movement, breathing the with movement, put the connection together. And this reflects to the, to the viewer that he has, it is can, kind of guided in seeing something. What I do is when I prepare an artwork is I study and to see where to place the lines of tension. So I know where the eye is going to go to the first time and then where it jumps to another one. So it's kind of a guided meditation. If you want to play place in the meditation uh, ambient, it's like a guided meditation. Yeah. So That's actually spirituality comes with light. 
Hmm. Because uh, when it when it feels like meditation, and actually it was very meditative at MAMA Modern Art Museum of Algiers in 2019 when we had the exhibition together, uh, lots of people, they've been there sitting on the floor watching your artwork for a long time. Sometimes it gets into 20 minutes watching over and over the cycle of your work. And that's it's exactly what really attracted my attention as a curator and bring you to, to Algeria, because I know that as long as we are getting the viewer into a view, um, a meditating or yeah, a meditating process, so the language is universal. So there is no um, confrontation. It's become actually an, an artwork exhibited in a care foundation, if I can call it this way, you know? And by this, I would uh, now go uh, to Amira Sekic. She will also give her own version of confrontation, care confrontation, and, and love as well, because she works on the theory of Varumi. Uh, hello, Amira. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah. So I'm totally inspired to go to Italy now. And <laughs> all I want to do is dance in uh, Mr. Moro's light, because uh, beautiful reflections from everyone on the panel. So yes, as a dancer, um, as uh, someone who works to create a lot of different worlds coming together, right? So my artistry combines hip hop movement, which is described as the physical element of hip hop culture, right? The physical graffiti of, of hip hop culture and mixing it with uh, my Muslim American identity and Islamic, uh, Islamic themes. Um, I am currently using the work of Rumi, who is a really popular poet in, in the US, one of the most popular poets, even though he's from the 13th century and uh, he is a Muslim scholar. And a lot of people here in the US don't really realize uh, the connection that he has to Islam. Um, and yet there's a universal love of his poetry. And so by combining his poetry in with my uh, dance and, and music, which is really American, right? Using like yeah. uh, a Chicago DJ who creates my music. And then um, the Rumi poetry is vocalized by my friend and artist Asia Black, who is also Muslim American from Denver. And then uh, dancing to that. It's a, it's definitely probably an, a definition of oxymoron. Um, yeah, <laughs> I so think I, I discovered oxymoron. <laughs> <laughs> I discovered the work of Amiran in 2016 when I was also, um, you know, browsing uh, artworks from uh, different performers to invite them to one of the exhibitions in Algeria at that time at Bardo National Museum, and I saw it on one of her work that called a Muslim don't panic and it was a call actually to panic <laughs> but it was no panic on there it was a great video and an, a performer a performance where I recognized immediately myself expression performances definitely uh, but but with the same with the same meaning so I invited uh, Amira then three years later to, to perform in, uh, in Al-Tibaq. And she actually performed already with the light of uh, Masa Galeano Mora in the background, which actually gives different perception. It's really amazing uh, uh, work and titled uh, Love Embraces of All. And then there's something that it's also been so, so fun, so funny, and also unpredictable is that people in Algeria thought Amira was Egyptian or Iraqi woman, you know? So they automatically couldn't really mix um, Amira by being a performer, a hip hop dancer by being a Muslim woman. And I guess also in the US, hip hop dancer being also Muslim American, it's also kind of, you know, um, curious. It's very curious. And it's actually two oxymorons at the same time 
you have this same difference, you know, identity. Uh, you also then later on went for a residency, you know, as we talk of uh, professional network residency in uh, Shanghai uh, Islamic Art Museum. I mean, in Shanghai, actually, we don't really expect um, Islamic Art Museum in Shanghai, Hawaii, then then actually the location and the residency and bringing not only you as a performer, but also other hip hop dancers, but you've been, of course, mastering the, the, the group. Uh, we will invite uh, the viewer to see this uh, short video about you performing, and then we will talk about this uh, experience with more details. And so to be in this place as an artist, sharing the space with these other artists from centuries ago, who are Muslim as well, there's no greater honor. be a Muslim artist at this period of time in history where we're up against a lot of challenges and to be surrounded by all of this amazing examples of Islamic thought and art and ingenuity and I'm here dancing in this magical place surrounded by the brilliance of those who came before me that experience alone is unfathomable <laughs> Fiery breath, look like you ain't got no energy left. I when I came uh, here, you know, and they're like, okay, we want you to collaborate with super groupers. I was like, awesome. And then we put together a little structured improv between me and Keith Cross and Naveed that's really fun. When I say hip, you say hop, hip, 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 hip. You know, we come from different places, with up different upbringings, different understandings, worldviews, but we have this commonality in hip hop, so we immediately speak each other's language. You don't need a fancy studio. You don't even need a really fancy floor. You know, you just have the right people together, and it's a party. And so I think that's the magic of hip hop, and like, us coming together like this. It's like surprising, and then not surprising, because yeah. it's also like, oh yeah. That's, that's why we love what we do. That's why we're in this form. Beautiful day, blessed to say that I'm living in Hawaii, nay. Waikiki Beach is only like two blocks away where rippers ride waves like every day. Pizza doors duke for this beautiful space and all the beautiful people up in this place. It's just amazing to see how something that came out of like Doris Duke's appreciation for the Muslim world, where she was like so inspired by this beauty that she saw but now it's become something more powerful, a symbol of cultures coming together. And then to be a place where Muslim artists can come and do residencies and be around this, in this time period with what we're dealing with, that is a very special gift. Be certain in the religion of love. Be certain in the religion of love, of love. Be certain in the religion of love that there are no believers or unbelievers. There are no believers or unbelievers because love embraces us all. such happy memories oh. yeah <laughs> it's a cool cool and really good and powerful experience you had so how this impact you know the your society you know as american uh, muslim women and how this is perceived in the arab world well i think uh you know going to honolulu hawaii and being in shangri-la which is this uh, museum, like you saw, of all this beautiful artwork, um, and then doing contemporary art, doing hip hop, 
you know what I mean? Which yeah. was created in the last 40 years. And uh, being a Muslim in, in America, it was just such a, a powerful experience. And I felt a very spiritual connection to that place, um, to those other artists. It was really magical. The wall behind me was from, um, it was from Iran and it was built in the 13th century and brought to the museum. And when I touched that wall, I cried. Like I can't explain why, but the energy from that like piece of art behind me just brought tears to my eyes. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I can't believe that I'm, I'm sharing this space. You know what I mean? Between the only thing separating us is time, you know? But this was yeah. created by an artist and I'm here and we're in the same space. And it's so magical. And, um, and I think that that was the lasting impression from, from that residency there was just even that wall. I can't stop thinking about it, you know? It was around yeah. when Rumi was around. Like that wall was there. He made, maybe he passed by it he one passed day. By. And now this girl is dancing to his words, translated in English in Hawaii. That's crazy, you know? Yeah. And so I just love that kind of um, thinking about that. Um, and as far as, you know, how I'm perceived in, in the, uh, you know, Muslim majority countries, I've performed in Bangladesh, I've performed in Algeria, and performed also in Kuwait. And it's amazing. I think there's this hesitant, uh, hesitancy at first. They're like, well, first they have a concept of hip hop that's like just for music videos and commercialized hip hop. And then they have this concept of what is correct or proper for a Muslim woman who wears hijab uh, to do. But then when I'm seen dancing, they're like, wait a second. I, I feel okay about this, right? Like, this is beautiful. There's something poetic about this. And so I think that uh, for me on paper, when people hear that, they're a little bit shocked, but when they see it, they embrace it. And that's what I've, I've kind of noticed around the world is that um, I think that, like you said, art unites people. Art speaks to the heart, right? It's, it's whether it's uh, looking at a piece of light, which we can all understand and, and marveling at the dimensions of something so simple but so powerful, or whether it's dance, which we don't need words, we just watch it and we feel something. Um, I think that that unites us. And so, you know, part of my mission is to encourage uh, artists of all backgrounds to create and in particularly Muslim women to embrace what they love to do, whatever it is, and to explore that, you know? And so I've had a, a greater impact than I even set out to have. You know, initially I was just fighting anti-Islamic uh, speech here in the US and, you know, fighting misconceptions about Muslim women and that was my goal. But then I realized I was also inspiring a lot of Muslim women to do what they love, to pursue the arts, to um, you know take risks and things like that, and so that's just an added benefit uh, to you know being an artist. Like you set out to do one thing, but like you'll see all these different effects from just your one action, you know. And so, alhamdulillah, like thanks to God that to have that experience um, and to be that person, I'm really thankful and humbled to, um, to do this art form and participate Amazing. in this. Amazing, yeah, that's, you're probably now wondering the connection between uh, Sara, Laura, Massimiliano, Amira. So you're wondering what is the idea behind it. So the idea behind it at al -Diba bring together all these differences, all these different backgrounds, all those different beliefs. Same as on your work, you said there is no believers or unbelievers, but there is love, there is connection with everyone. There's a universal, uh, universal um, language that connects everyone 
no matter what, they are performers, they are art professionals or are galleries or residencies. At some point when we are at the level of universal language, no matter what, the, con the connection is here. So I invited today our professional artist, performer to, and you know, some of the you behind the screen right now, artists, art professionals as well, or, or art lovers, collectors, I also invite you to contribute to this universal language and come all together because that's what makes things happen. So we are usually very comfortable on and what we know and what we used to do. That's why I brought you the example to prove you the, the contrary of Massimiliano Moro exhibiting in Algeria. And then he find actually the same thing. That's what I said about the same difference. And Amira said as well in Algeria doing this, Laura Gallon and Sara Tortado by creating this uh, network that of course, it, um, it requires uh, courage, you know, and taking risks to, to build this uh, universal language. But as long as you operate in that level of reality, uh, you are kind of able to create and able to communicate. I think Laura would, would like to add something. We don't, we don't hear you. It's a complete uh, what you told uh, is, uh, um, I, I don't have, uh, anything to add uh, just uh, to feel uh, uh, like a big family and uh, <laughs> we will uh, meet surely we will meet in person uh, one day after this uh, period and sure. uh, we hope we will meet all of you in uh, Arsenale of Venice. Of course, there is one of the um, uh, viewers that asked the question and says, uh, this is Susana Aldana from New York, actually, is a painter that I worked with before. And thank you for holding this informative session. Uh, it's so nice to hear you all speak about this network. Will Altiba hold an artist call to be exhibited in Algeria? Uh, Altiba actually operates uh, for its edition on invitation only, which uh, I invite artists to take place in art uh, in Altiba in uh, Mama Museum. But also there is a chance to win the opportunity uh, of being exhibited in uh, Mama Museum. It's by being one of the uh, winner of the awards of uh, uh, Altiba uh, Art and Festival offered by uh, Arte Laguna Prize. Um, but who knows, there will be other opportunities in Algeria, you know, and I would definitely uh, invite artists to, to participate. And then they said also about Arte Laguna Prize, why did you name it Arte Laguna? Bye, Sarah. Okay, Arte Laguna because, uh, um, Arte because we want to deal with Arte and the Laguna because we believe in the city of Venice, uh, which main characteristic is uh, the Laguna. Uh, so Laguna is a Laguna and uh, um, Venice is uh, a very special place. And uh, when artists come to the Arsenale also, and also from our side, we have a great emotion because uh, um, this place uh, uh, help us to give also um, more uh, importance to the artworks exhibited inside. And so we decided to call Arte Laguna uh, for this re reason, to give importance to, to Venice. And also because Beatrice Sousa, who was one of the founders, um, lives, uh, lived in Venice. And uh, it's to represent us uh, as Venetian people. But uh, as the water and the lagoon, we are open to go uh, toward the sea. <laughs> Good. And Massimiliano, anything you would like to add at the uh, talk? Well, no, for me, it's this universal thing also appears in connections that happens when uh, somebody that took me to Algeria, that lives in Barcelona, where I all, also half live, bring me to a panel where there are people from Venice, which is where I'm more most born because I'm born 40 kilometers from Venice. So, and we are on Zoom. So this, this, uh, fluid talking about connections, about 
how we do and what we do connect people. This is the this is the proof for me that this is not something we talk in abstract. This is something that exists because it's very easy to find connections, and then these connections uh, are physical. They are not just some idea in somebody's mind. They happen. You meet. You realize that when you and what I like about this is the world is very big, but when when we are doing things like this, it feels like Laura said, it feels like a family. It feels small. It feels it, for, it feels like it's a, a dimension we can we can we can go on with. So this this connection take away the scary part of the world, and this is for me this is very very important, and I think it's something we have to to enforce and to keep doing it and with whatever mediums we find if we cannot have exhibitions we do zooms if i don't know whatever comes we have to go on with this and good yeah here we, a we have for a question me. for you yeah for from yeah. tim van gaal says with the incredible advancement in lighting technology does massimiliano you see new creative opportunities in the future yes i mean <laughs> definitely art... yes <laughs> Definitely yes, as it always has been, art and technology goes on pair. Uh, I think that mostly art is uh, it's kind of beyond technology because it has the feeling, it has the, the intuition that then goes to technology. And if I'm thinking of my artworks, if I had to do them 20 years, only 20 years ago, it was impossible. I would need theater project or I would need big, huge amount of equipment. And now, I can fit 1,000 square meters exhibition in one trolley that can take off my airplane. So now we are at this point when the LED revolution, all the part in lightning, especially for what interests me is the part of color, because before we had to, do, to add filters to have a color, now we can produce light directly. And who knows if we keep going with this uh, speed, what we can do with light, I mean, I'm thinking of all LED panels and all parts, and we can actually have black instead of turned off. So there's always new opportunities. And I think part of an artist, if you work with uh, some kind of technology, you have to read a lot and keep informed because you don't want to be left behind. So you just have to yeah. go deep in the internet and find everything. Great. Well, then, uh we just come up to the end of this uh, cultural oxymoron art talk uh, moderated by al -Tibak. So um, thank you for your time, for your presentation, for everything you've done, and also for the viewer, uh, I would say, for all the art professionals, artists, galleries, art lovers, or at least someone who had an aha of something we said today. You know, we are here, we invite you to join the movement, to join the journey of possibilities and love. Thank you very much. Anything you have to say, then Becca is here. Thank you all. I thought that was a wonderful way to kick off our talks program. And it's really true about making the world a smaller place and really creating a family through our virtual connections and hopefully having that opportunity in the future to break bread together and be able to share music and visual art and culture. Um, so thank you all for participating and thank you to everybody for joining in. Um, we'll have a recording of this live on our site probably towards the end of today. And Make sure to check out um, Altiba's site, um, you know, and take a look at Massimiliano's works as well. Good. Thank you. Thank you all and have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. 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 Bye.